welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jess. I'm a third grade teacher in Southern California. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about all things flexible seating at the beginning of the year. Flexible seating is something that I just believe in so wholeheartedly and I'm just so obsessed with and have seen such amazing things from it with my students that I wanna make sure that other people have all the information available to them so that they can have it be successful for them too. So today I wanna to give you guys my four tips for the beginning of the school year to get your flexible seating started off on the right foot with your students and hopefully to have it be a successful system in your classroom all year long. So let's get started. My very first tip for you guys for getting flexible seating started off on a strong foot is to communicate your why to your school administration, your students' parents, and your students themselves. If you've never seen flexible seating and you're kind of curious as to what it's all about and kind of what the purpose is, um, for me the purpose is to provide a comfortable learning environment where students have movement and choice. So providing them different options where they're gonna be comfortable so they can do their work is really important to me. That's why I have so many different options because if something doesn't work for them, then they have something else that will. So um, going in and talking to your admin is going to be really important to get them on board. Your admin is one of the biggest stakeholders in your classroom. They're the person who is either going to make or break your flexible seating. They're gonna be the person that can tell you, yeah, you can do this, this is safe, this is good to go, I support you, or um, even finding room in the budget to give you more flexible seating options if you are lucky, or finding ways that you can get more flexible seating, or they're gonna be the person that says, you know what, I don't think this is working, I don't feel comfortable with this, we're gonna get rid of it. So what I would really suggest doing is going to your admin and telling them why you wanna do this in the first place, what you plan on doing, and what the systems are in place that you have for your students so that you know it's going to be successful, or at least the hopes that you have, because of course, from classroom to classroom, student to student, teacher to teacher, it's going to be different and maybe some things aren't gonna work, but what plan do you have in place to um, fix something if it goes wrong? Same thing with the parents of your students. I don't know how it works at your guys' school, but at my school, we have back to school night the night before the first day of school. So my parents and students, if they choose to come, um, get to see a sneak peek into our classroom before they even start school. So that is when we do our big presentation and that is when they get to see our classroom. So the first thing they do when they walk in is they're kind of like, um, what is this? Some of them. And then some of them are like, this is so cool. And then some of them don't care. And then some of them are just kind of confused as to the purpose. And so in my back to school night slide, I always, always, always start with, well, I introduce myself first. And then I talk about flexible seating because they've already seen that. And they're probably curious as to what the purpose is, whether they think it's cool, whether they're nervous about it, whatever it is, I want to ease their fears by telling them a little bit about why I want to do this. So something that I like to do to help parents feel a little bit more comfortable, hopefully, is um, I tell them about myself as a learner. So I tell them, you know, when you go to read or when you go to write or when you go to do anything kind of educational where you're going to have to be focused on something, do you like to sit in a hard, uncomfortable chair at a desk where you're sitting upright or do you like to get comfortable? And I've never once heard someone say they like to sit upright. And maybe that is something that they like to do. And that is why I have desks with chairs as an option as well. But I think for most people, we like to get comfortable while we are learning or really doing anything. So um, I think that analogy kind of helps them to understand like, oh, okay, so if I wanna be comfortable while I learn, then why wouldn't I expect the same for my eight-year-old or 10-year-old or whatever grade level you're in? So um, I think that kind of helps to start the discussion and then I tell them a little bit about how flexible seating works, um, what it is, and then how their kids are gonna be using it. So I'll go more into that in a second, but um, I think it's really important that you talk to your parents about it. If you have any kind of like back to school night packet for your parents or any kind of like folder with information, definitely, definitely, definitely put something in there about that. Um, I do that as well, and I will be showing you guys a little inside look probably this coming week. I will be showing you guys my back to school night folder. So um, stay tuned for that if you wanna see exactly what information I put in there for parents. But for right now, just start to think about how do you wanna communicate this to your parents? And then lastly, how are you gonna communicate this to your students? Because same thing, this is gonna be new for them. And even if it's not new for them, depending on um, what teacher they have, they may have never had flexible seating or it's going to be different from how they've had in the past. And no matter what kind of flexible seating you have, it's probably gonna be different because it's different from every classroom and every teacher. And you're just gonna to wanna to communicate to them the purpose of actually having flexible seating. So I like to tell my students whether they were at back to school night or not, I give them the whole little spiel that I gave to their parents. And then I also tell them that flexible seating is a tool to help us learn. I feel like this is a really, really, really key part because they need to understand that the reason I'm giving them these choices, the reason I'm giving them this different seating environment is to try to help them focus better and learn better. I'm gonna turn the lights on, one second. <laughs> okay. As 
purpose I was saying. So the purpose is to help them focus and learn better. And so we need to use these as tools, not as toys. So communicating this to your students so they know why they're even having this, I think is really important. Otherwise it's going to be easy for them to look at it as just like a fun, extra cool thing instead of, oh, this is something that's gonna help me learn better. Let me take it seriously so I can focus. That might seem like a kind of duh thing, but I think it's really important to communicate that to them so they understand the purpose of why they have this and then they can make the best choice moving forward. So that is something that I do almost immediately on the first day of school. We come in, we do like a get to know you game, and then I kind of hop right into the flexible seating stuff because they're looking around, they wanna try it out, they're curious about it, and I wanna to talk to them about it too because I'm excited about it. So um, I always have them come down to this little living room area that you see me sitting in, and yes, I am sitting on the floor. <laughs> but um, I have them come down here and we have a conversation about that and then we can slide right into the different options that we have. That's gonna be something that's really important too, showing them what you have and then showing them how you want them to use it and how you don't want them to use it. So for example, one thing that is always really hard for the students to use at first is the yoga balls. They want to bounce on them, they want to roll on them, they want to put them on their stomachs, and that is normal. They're kids, they're eight years old in my case, and they've never had this before, so why would I not expect that they're gonna wanna run and jump on a big bouncy ball? I would too. So it's important for me to communicate those expectations to them and show them the appropriate ways to use them. So I walk them around to the different parts of the room and I have them sit down and I'll show them um, what it looks like to sit on that tool appropriately. So for example, the yoga balls. I will sit on the yoga ball and I will sit on it appropriately. I'll do gentle bounces. And instead of telling them exactly what I'm doing that I want them to do, I have them talk to a partner about what they notice me doing. So for example, hopefully they pick up on the fact that both feet are on the floor, um, that my bottom is in the middle of the chair and not leaning too forward or too far back so I can roll off. Um, hopefully they notice I am doing gentle bounces that I'm not bouncing really high and I'm not going kind of out of control. Um, hopefully they notice that I am sitting on my bottom and I'm not rolling on my stomach, that my hands aren't on the ground, um, that my legs aren't out, you know, things like that. They'll come up with all different kinds of things. And so not only does that show them what you do want them to do, but that shows them what you don't want them to do. And I feel like that lends itself to a really easy conversation right after that of, this is what is also unacceptable. So if I see that you have feet up on the yoga ball, is that gonna be safe? No, because your feet are not stabilizing you, you could fall off and then you can get hurt. So making sure to talk to them about what you do want them to do on each spot and then what you don't want them to do on each spot is really important to me and modeling that for them and then letting them try it out. So as we're walking through, I'll take a couple volunteers and a couple kids can come up and sit on it and I try to pick different kids each time so that by the time we model all the different spots, they've all gotten to try at least one. And I try to tell them too, if you wanted to try one thing and you didn't get to, it's okay because you're gonna have a chance to. So first thing, making sure you're communicating your why. Second thing, making sure that you are showing them the different options and then modeling for them what you do want them to do and what you don't want them to do. The third thing is going over rules. So not only do we have specific expectations for each individual spot or seat, but we also have general classroom rules for flexible seating. And I'm gonna go walk you over to where my rules are posted in my classroom so you guys can see what those look like and I will explain them to you. All right, so as you can see, these rules are posted on my whiteboard at all times. These are easy to reference back to and they're a good visual reminder if someone is not using the tools appropriately, I can easily walk them over to this part of the classroom. We can have a quick conversation and that usually nips that behavior in the bud of whatever rule they're not following. Um, but these are always posted. So I'm gonna zoom in and show you guys what each one is. So the first thing that we talk about is choosing a spot that helps you to be successful. So the whole point of flexible seating is that you are able to learn better, you are able to focus, that you are comfortable, so that you can do your best work. And choosing a spot that helps you to be successful is key in that. So for example, if you are choosing to sit in a yoga ball, but you're not using it the right way and you're rolling around and you're distracting other people and you're getting distracted by bouncing too high or whatever, whatever it is, is that a spot that helps you to be successful? And if the answer is no, then that is not following our flexible seating rules. That really has no purpose and it's actually detrimental to our learning instead of beneficial. So choose a spot that helps you to be successful. The second rule is stay focused on your task the entire time. So as you may have noticed in my first classroom setup vlog, um, a lot of seats are paired together for collaborative learning or they're very close to another seat. So it's really important to talk about that you need to stay focused on your task, that you don't need to be worried about what your partner is doing unless you are doing partner work, that you need to make sure that you are doing your job. So staying focused on what you're doing, don't worry about the people next to you unless you are supposed to be worried about what they're doing. 
which leads us to the third rule, do not distract others. So if they are, again, talking to a neighbor because they're sitting too close or they are just not getting their work done because they are sitting next to someone that they are choosing to sit next to because you have to remember, I don't pick their spots, they pick their spots. So if they are choosing to sit next to someone just because they're their best friend and they're getting distracted or they are not staying focused, then they are breaking our rules and I will tell you at the end what the consequence for that is. The next rule is your favorite seat might be someone else's favorite too, so be kind and share. This is something that I get questions about quite a bit on Instagram about how to make sure that they're not fighting over their spots. Um, do I ever have students that want the same seat and they argue about it? Of course there's gonna be times where students wanna pick the same spot, especially in the beginning of the year when it's new and they haven't quite figured out what spot they like best. There's going to be times where they choose the same spot and then they kind of just stand there. Um, on the first day of school, like I said, I go over these rules and so if they are not following these rules, I'm gonna pick their seat for them. So this honestly is not usually an issue. They know if they're fighting over a spot, I'm gonna move them. And they don't wanna lose their choice, they don't wanna lose their ability to pick their own seat, so they usually will work it out themselves very quickly. If not, I will take them over here, we will talk about this rule, and if we can't work it out, I pick their spot. So usually I tell them to, you know what, if you usually are sitting at that spot, why don't you just go ahead and let someone else sit there? Or if you guys are both new, just do rock, paper, scissors. And then whoever loses can maybe sit there tomorrow. So usually they can work it out themselves really, really easily. The next thing is taking good care of all of our materials. So that means putting back the yoga balls on the little seats, making sure that all of our pillows are put back the nice way, making sure that they are not marking on anything with markers or cutting anything with scissors, making sure that they're not throwing things, um, they're keeping things clean. That is really important to me and it helps them to take ownership of the classroom because they are the ones who are taking care of their stuff and they know that it's our materials, it's not my materials, it's not my flexible seating, it's our flexible seating and if you want to continue to have it, then you need to make sure that it's taken care of. Especially things like the yoga balls that can pop, I tell them I am not replacing these so if they break because you guys are poking them with pencils or whatever, then you just don't get them. So that hasn't been an issue either. The next rule is use each seat appropriately. So this goes back to the first day of school when we show them exactly what the expectations are every seat. They know exactly what appropriate and inappropriate looks like on each different spot. I'm gonna go over here for the next rule. So the next one says put flexible seating items back exactly where you found them. So a lot of times things like pillows or even these two little camping chairs right here, they will start to get pushed back because they are not very heavy. Um, or the things that are like, again, pillows or surf seats or lap desks, those have specific spots in the classroom that they live when no one is using them. So I don't wanna find those in the middle of walkways or around the room. If you used it, then it's your responsibility to put it back. So in our classroom tour on the first day, that is where I show them exactly where everything lives and where I expect it to be, to be put back at. Last but not least, the teacher has the right to move anyone, anytime. So this is kind of a catch-all rule, which I feel like is really helpful to help them understand. If you are not following these rules, you will get this privilege taken away. This is not a right that you have. If I need to put you in a permanent spot, I can do that. If you are playing around with a friend, if you are making poor choices, if you are not getting your work done, I will and can move you anytime, no questions asked. So they get the hang of this very quickly because like I said, they don't want to lose their privilege and I don't like to take it away from them, but there are times where students are not following these rules and I will move them. So for example, last year I had a student who just really couldn't figure out how to be responsible with flexible seating. And so for an entire month, he had a permanent spot and we were having conversations daily about where he thinks a good spot would be for him, how he can stay focused and how we can make a better choice. And then after that month was over, he got to pick a spot again and it wasn't a problem from there on out. So making sure to nail this one home on the first day that if you are not following all of these rules, if you are not using flexible seating the right way, you do not get to have that privilege anymore. So those are the rules I have. Like I said, they're up all year long. I go over them the first day of school and then I go over them again in little bits for the, like the next maybe two weeks. 
That way I'm making sure to kind of go back over them, make sure they're understanding them. And then I also make sure that as I am walking around those first couple weeks, if I notice that students aren't using it correctly, I will just quickly have conversations with them about what they're doing and making sure that we can get off on a good start by showing them the appropriate way. So. Um, if you have any other rules that you use in your classroom that you think are really helpful, feel free to leave them down below. I would love to get your guys' opinion on um, what rules you use for flexible seating or any other suggestions you might have. And then if you are wanting to um, buy these rules along with the flexible seating heading, the colorful words and then the cursive, um, this is a product in my TPT store. So I will put this in the description box so that if you guys want to put this up in your classroom too, you have the link to that. I didn't mention this before, but I put those rules on a PowerPoint and I can't find it right now, otherwise I'd show you guys, but it's nothing fancy. I just put it on a PowerPoint and then I put it up on my TV on the first day of school and that's where I go over it with my students from. So they can sit here in the living room again, we can go over those rules and then they're also posted in the classroom so they can see them at any time. My last tip for you guys for getting flexible seating start off on the right foot is to introduce your students to flexible seating by picking their spots. I know this might sound contradictory to everything I just said, but it's just for a couple weeks and it allows them to try every single spot. So I actually got this idea from Jill at HelloFit and you're gonna just need a roll of washi tape. This one is like a pretty rose gold one. I think it's from Michaels, um, but obviously any color will do. So what I do is I put a little piece of washi tape big enough to write a student's name, maybe like this big on um, every single spot that I want the students to be able to sit at the first day of school. So I will put one at every single desk. I will put ones at the futon. I will put them on the um, big black chairs with the little rolly, um, like the little desk that comes out. And then I will put a student's name on that. That is how they know where they're gonna sit on the first day of school. I do this for a couple reasons. One, when students walk in, I want them to know where to go. I don't want them to just kind of be wandering around and be confused because uh, most classrooms, I feel like, have name tags for students and they know where to go on the first day. And it kind of helps to ease that discomfort and that anxiousness of the first day of school, which I even feel as a teacher. So I don't want them to feel nervous because they don't know where to sit. So put them on their desk. And then two, that also allows me to move them so that they can try all the different spots. So. After the first day of school, I have the students pick up their little washi tape name tag and they move it to another spot. So I did this um, a little bit differently last year. I just moved it after school, but it gets kind of confusing to remember like where you move the tape to and who has or hasn't sat in certain spots. So all I have students do is pick up their backpack, put it on their back and then pick up their little tape and then go and stand over by the stage over here. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. So they're kind of out of the way. There's no seats over there. Um, and then I just call students over a couple at a time to go pick their spots. So I try to do it as fair as possible. I have sticks in my classroom that I use, so you could pull sticks, but on the first day of school, the students aren't gonna know their sticks. So it's okay if you just do a couple at a time because you were gonna pick them anyways. So it doesn't really matter where they get to sit the next day as long as it's different. So I always tell them, go pick a spot that you didn't sit at today that looks interesting to you, that you're excited to try out. And that's it. That's how they know where they're gonna go the next day of school. So those four things are the four main things that I would tell you if you were starting out flexible seating and were a little bit nervous about how to start it in the beginning of the year, how to communicate it to parents, to students, what to do on the first day of school with it. Um, I hope this was helpful so you guys get some ideas for how you can start flexible seating in your classroom. And definitely, definitely, definitely stay tuned because I'm gonna have a bunch more videos coming out about flexible seating, especially with beginning of the year coming up. So make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and thank you for watching. I will see you guys soon.